Hi, I'm Ray Nielsen, and thank you for tuning us in this evening on the Good Times Picture Show that we have in our studio this evening. Mike Fitzgerald, who is from El Dorado, Arkansas, he's written a book on the history of Universal Pictures, and he's got another one coming out soon. No one had been in the house for many years. It was full of Michael Fitzgerald's movie memorabilia collection. And people might be thinking how an accountant from El Dorado, Arkansas might collect a collection like this. Racks and racks of huge movie reels. There were seven or eight hundred of them. And it goes so far beyond being a fan. Real, real to audio, eight millimeters, 3,000 headshots and studio stills, 400 posters, 1,500 lobby stills. It's not just photographs, it's not just films, it's everything. The collection itself is a snapshot of cinema history that has long been forgotten. He spent his life doing this. We need to find out why and what his story is. It was too big an effort by one person. And our job, after all, is to save the history of our area. We're on the southern border of Arkansas, about two hours south of Little Rock, that had the good fortune of having an oil boom in the 1920s, which changed our lives to a more cultural lifestyle. I am here representing the South Arkansas Historical Preservation Society. And recently, we saw a grand turnaround in what our mission was, which was early on to support the pioneer life and an 1830s home that we've seen restored in years past. But now, we had this opportunity to go to the home of Michael Fitzgerald, who had died a few years earlier. But his brother had come to town to clean out his house. And his intent was to put everything in the house in a dumpster. Well, much to my surprise, it was full of Michael Fitzgerald's movie memorabilia collection. So I don't know how vast his collection was, but I know it must have been cheap. I mean, he must have had films in every closet, under the bed, in the floorboards. I mean, I don't know, but he had so much stuff. We made several inquiries on a national level, but to be really honest, we didn't know what we had. And then along came Darren Wiley. I was brought on about three years ago to just take a look at uh, the collection and to basically write it down and get it documented. And then from that and just discovering what was actually included was where we decided to go even further on and moving to where we are. Hi, Sierra. I'm John Fort. I work at the Preservation Society with Darren, and I help restore and clean some of the old films that we have here during uh, my summer at home. Like I said, that is real too, so we do have to find real one and yeah. still capture it. As a film student, you learn a lot about these old films and the history about them, but actually sitting here and actually watching them and cleaning them, you learn so much more than just like sitting in a classroom. You actually be a part of the history of restoring it and recleaning it. Me and Darren's eyes right now are the only people that are seeing all these films. Inside the collection are over 800 reels of classic films, television, uh, dating all the way from 1928 all the way up into 1980. Because one of his missions and his most important mission to his whole reason he started was so these people wouldn't be forgotten. Dear Michael, thanks loads for showing the film. The jurors thought you were a most unusual fan. They liked you and were impressed you knew so much about films and people. Remember, you're still 29 and many more. Anne. This is from Anne Gwynn, mother of Gwynn Guilford and grandmother of Chris Pine, otherwise known as Captain James T. Kirk. These containers are thousands of letters of correspondence from everyone in vintage Hollywood. My name is Anthony Slide. I am a historian and scholar of popular culture. And for the past 40 years, I've been phasing entertainment memorabilia. Among my clients have been such famous names as Gregory Peck, 
Ridley Scott, the director, Charlton Heston, and uh, most recently, actually, the estate of Carl Reiner. I think what is wonderful is the fact that, uh, that Michael Fitzgerald got in touch with so many stars of the period and that they obviously liked him uh, and they were happy to correspond with him. And we have the correspondence there in the collection. That's formidable. Hello? Hi, Mike. It's Rosemary. How are you? Oh, Fine, how'd you like the show? Hi, Michael. This is Gwen Guilford, and I want to let you know that Mom has moved into the motion picture home. Michael? Uh-huh. This is Shirley. Well, how are you? Michael, this is Peggy Ryan, and it's Monday morning. Uh, I'm calling because I want to know the exact dates of the show because we're getting our plane tickets. With something like these audio recordings, they are really immensely important from an archival and historical perspective. We've never known that there was a debate on filming Psycho in color, except for that card from Janet Leigh that says it was always going to be in black and white. Pieces of Hollywood trivia that is like, that'll score you a point on Jeopardy. <laughs> Here, high in the hills of Glendale, where we're celebrating the anniversary of the Jiven Jackson Jills, Universal's tribute to the wonderful musicals of the 30s and the 40s. We all went to studio schools and this is really like our little college or high school reunion. It's marvelous. We look forward to it. It wasn't until Michael's friendship with Peggy Ryan developed that something actually happened for the Jive and Jackson Jills, especially Hollywood studio school. You didn't get a prom, you didn't get graduate, you didn't get anything like that. So she had always lamented that they had never had anything to that effect. Well, Michael said, you know, I can fix that. Michael thinks I'm the, or thought, and does still oh, think that I'm the think. greatest thing that's ever walked on two legs. And he <laughs> wrote a great big book, uh, research work, uh, about Universal, and I was the inspiration for that. I mean, I, I love the album with the Universal in the 40s, and I love the people. And I go around visiting them once a year anyway, and this is a much easier way. Why not get them all together at once? And they enjoy it too, and it's, it's terrific, it's fun. News of Michael's death didn't actually make much news in El Dorado. There was no obituary run, but uh, in California, there were full-page ads run in both Variety and Los Angeles Times for the passing of the film historian and friend that the stars got to know as Michael T. Fitzgerald. It's very, very unusual to find anybody in a township such as El Dorado, Arkansas, with a collection this size. In fact, it would be unusual to find anyone in the United States with a collection this size, quite frankly. The collection itself is a snapshot of cinema history that has long been forgotten. It's not just photographs, it's not just books, it's not just films, it's everything. We know the actual story and the relationships about these people and the relationships with Michael. We want somebody to take it all and to appreciate it. Go so far beyond being a fan to being more of someone who is a confidant, is a friend, and that's what Michael was. I think it's going to take a while to find the right home for it. But once you do find that right home, then I, I know it will be loved and cared for. It's a collection of memories for film lovers about these filmmakers, about these actors and actresses. Information that you would never be able to get from anywhere else unless you were just sitting and telling your story to a guy who happened to be named Michael.